everybody, this is Jessica and Noam. Today we're here for another episode of What's That Sound? And we are looking at the drum sound you hear in Criminal by Fiona Apple. It's produced by Andrew Slater. Uh, the drummer was Matt Chamberlain. Uh, it is one of the cooler drum sounds of that era. It sounds really wild and focused and over-compressed. Uh, we're gonna figure it all out. For the drumming on this song, because this is such a processed drum sound, if I were to play everything normally, like the cymbals at full volume, like I usually do, it would just be too much. So I had to really cut back on cymbals and I still laid into the kick and the snare. For our drums on this song, we used our 70s Gretsch kick drum, the Ludwig Acrolyte snare, and 14 inch K-suite hi-hats as well as an 18 inch K-suite crash cymbal. All right, so trying to figure out how they made this sound, um, we had one little tidbit which was super helpful, which is Matt Chamberlain in an interview mentioned that they used a harmonica mic on this. And I am assuming that that is the Sure Green Bullet, which is like the most popular harmonica mic. Uh, if you see anyone playing harmonica, they're usually using this. That microphone is not meant for recording drums in any way. It's not even meant to go into a preamp. This is meant to be plugged directly into a guitar amp, right? It has a quarter inch output. Um, you have to plug it into a DI if you wanna record it. And it has a really, really aggressive mid-range sound. This is why it is used a lot for harmonica. And when you listen to these drums, it kind of makes sense because these drums have like a really aggressive mid-range sound. They're also hyper, hyper compressed. So we knew that we had to figure out this harmonica mic, where to place it, how to deal with it. And we also knew that we had to figure out how we were gonna compress it. And once we got all that, the rest of it kind of came together. For kick, we are doing the classic kick in, kick out miking. Uh, these are really simple, like usual players. We used an AKG D12 as our kick in mic. It's not quite as modern of a mic as the D112 or some of the other, you know, Sennheiser 421s. It has a little bit more muted of an attack, a little bit more vintage of a sound which we felt was gonna work well with this because the harmonic mic was gonna be so aggressive, we didn't feel like the direct mics needed to be quite as, as punchy. That had a ton of attack on the kick out. We used the classic Sound Deluxe version of a FET 47. Sounds great, adds a ton of body. And both of those are going through 1073 preamps, minimal EQ, minimal compression on it. So for the snare, we kept it really simple. Uh, again, because we, we know that the harmonica mic is gonna do most of the heavy lifting in terms of character. And the only thing we needed from this mic is just a little bit of extra body, a little bit of extra uh, snap, and a little bit of control because the harmonica mic, we can't turn the snare up or down. So we used an SM57 going through a classic chain, a 1073 and a 1176 just barely touching it. Again, a lot of the punch is gonna come from that harmonica mic, so we didn't really need to process this too much. So 
So for the harmonica mic, this was a lot of pressure on this mic. We knew that this was gonna be like 80% of the drum sound. So what we did was we moved the mic around a lot. Moving the mic around, we just got different balances, right? We, we want this mic not to be like a single part of one sound. We want it to be a balanced drum sound in itself, right? And the only way to do that when you're recording something with one mic is to just move it around the room and see what sounds better. If you're not getting enough low end, sometimes you can drop it a little bit further down. It'll get a little bit more of the kick attack. If, the, if you drop it too low, sometimes the snare, you get too much of the bottom snares in there. Just try moving it around the room. So we ended up sticking that mic a little closer to where like the floor tom would be in a drum set. Uh, this is because all the cymbals were on the other side of the drum kit and we knew that the cymbals were gonna be a problem in this microphone. I had to kind of a bunch of times ask for Jessica to play the cymbals quieter because the way a drummer would normally play the cymbals, it does not work with this sound, right? It's so compressed and it's so heavily processed. It's just gonna bring all of those cymbals out. And as soon as you hit a cymbal, all of a sudden your snare kind of sounds bad uh, for a full two measures because that decay is just eating up all of the energy of that microphone. So we found a placement that we were pretty happy with. Then we started processing this, this mic. You can do a surprisingly large amount of processing on this mic. That is because it does not sound like natural drums to begin with. Usually when you start processing drums, if you go too far, they start to feel kind of overbaked. This already sounded like it had been in the oven a bunch of times, uh, just, just the nature of the physical microphone itself. It had a really aggressive mid-range sound. So we pulled away some of that mid-range. We compressed it really heavily. Uh, we landed on an 1176 compressor, and this is with uh, not, not the all buttons in mode, but the four and the eight ratios jammed in. The release on that is really, really important. We played around a lot with the release because you want it to be in rhythm with the song, right? You want the needle on your compressor to kind of get, get right back to zero right when the next hit is gonna happen. So that is like a very musical choice, how, how you set that release and how you're gonna actually have this drum pumping on purpose. That's a musical choice now, the way that it pumps. The attack is uh, also a, a, maybe not a musical choice, but uh, it is a really significant sonic choice in that all of the punch of the kick and the snare is gonna come from this microphone. And so we, because we're compressing so heavily, that attack is making a really big difference in the way that the attack feels of the kick and snare. You have to find something that works with both, right? If you go too fast, right, it might make the snare really snappy, but it might choke out the kick drum. If you go too slow, the kick drum might start to feel better, but all of a sudden the snare is taking up way too much space and it's losing some of the snap. Once we found the perfect balance of that, we added a bit of EQ. This was just kind of like almost corrective EQ to get rid of just how mid-rangey this uh, microphone was. So we were kind of scooping away a little bit and adding back a little bit of the highs that this mic didn't have. So for our overhead, we kept it really simple. This is an AKG 414. We kept it kind of high because we knew we wanted to get like a little bit of room in the overheads. Our overheads were kind of our safety net. The cymbals, all of that stuff, it's really, really processed in the harmonica mic, right? So we wanted to use our overhead as little as possible, but all of the like clarity, all of the high end, anything that we did not want to just sound really, really nasal and, and coming through a harmonica mic, we had to use the overhead for. Just to keep the energy up, we also blew up the overhead a little bit with an 1176. So, this drum sound is in mono, right? Everything panned dead center. Because of that, it's really easy to hear that when this extra hi-hat comes in, 
the pattern is not changing. They are just adding an extra hi-hat into the choruses. Uh, it's all panned all the way over on the right side, so it's really distinct from the main drum sound. There's also a tambourine over on the left side that is also very distinct. It's clear that they were all recorded uh, separately as overdubs. So here is just those elements individually. Finishing touches, we put a tiny bit of reverb just to pull it all together. Here's the whole thing. That was Criminal by Fiona Apple. Thanks for watching, and please let us know in the comments what other drum sounds you'd like to hear us break down. We will see you next time. <laughs> Bad. God, you always change. <laughs>